Recently, I experienced an injury and I wanted to take it as an opportunity to uh, teach and another opportunity for me to learn maybe what I did wrong or uh, just some self-evaluation. So I've done that. Um, I've learned from my own experience and um, I've had so many injuries playing sports at a high level for so long. Um, I'll just go over just a few. When I was in college, I played running back and line and linebacker, so I played both ways. But um, I broke my foot and tore the ligaments that run down the, the base of the foot. So it was like your Liz Franck and then uh, your plantar, all this stuff like that. And then I, I broke the fifth metatarsal. So I had two screws put in my foot. So that's my biggest injury I've ever had. And that's where I mostly learned all of my lessons on mental toughness and how to bounce back after experience. Experiencing something that really sets you back and kind of almost in a sense, in your mind ruins your goals or sets you back from the progress in you trying to make it to that end goal. Um, this is what actually what initially made me start enjoying the process opposed to looking at the end goal because then in that moment I could have I could have went and just broken myself and gave up all this stuff like that because this injury took me off for two years um, I had walked on to San Diego State and I was trying to earn a scholarship and right before I earned a scholarship like they were telling me like you're almost there like I'm on my I'm going in my second year and I was about I was I was getting playing time they're like we're gonna put you on a scholarship soon just keep you know, doing your thing, and then boom, break my foot, tear the ligaments in my foot. They had to put two, two screws into my foot that are three inches like this. They run up and down my foot. Um, and then that actually takes me out for two years, and no coach in college football is gonna give a kid who just destroyed or, or like completely destroyed his foot uh, a scholarship. It's just a waste of a scholarship. It's just the business behind it. But I, I stuck it through. I did the two years of like rehab and and I didn't walk for two years. I was on crutches for two years. Um, I had two surgeries to get my foot back to a position I could actually walk and run. The doctor said I should probably never play football again, but I decided to put the screws in, go through the rehab, and then uh, push myself to want to, you know, still achieve what I put out to, to achieve, which is play college football at the Division One level and earn a scholarship. I came back after two years and then ended up earning a scholarship but the process in which I had to, you know, fight the mental battles that it took to get there is, is now as an adult, I'm appreciating those lessons. So now when I have an injury now, so I just tore my IT band um, and I didn't tear it completely. One thing is that when you tear something completely, usually most of the time it'll actually roll up and then just bundle up into uh, where the insertion point is. It didn't, it didn't do that. It's just a partial tear, but it's like pretty bruised. It's a, a a good telltale sign if you tore something is if you hear a ripping sound and a tearing sound, which I did, I'll tell you how it happened. Um, it most of the time is gonna be a tear, but a lot of times we don't have full tears. Um, it is something that does happen, but when you do get it, it'll roll up and you'll see like it's just a bundle of muscle. It's like a big ball. So that didn't happen to me, but I was uh, warming up. And it was one of those mornings, it was Saturday morning and my kids were sleeping and my girl was sleeping so i was i was trying to be quick going to the gym i was trying to warm up too quickly on uh, my squats was something i'd never do i always take my time and i'm very like uh, precise with what i do but that day for whatever reason i was rushing i didn't feel like uh, doing as many warm-up sets so that that is my learning lessons like no matter what time crunch you're on don't rush your process take the time warm up properly no matter what level you're at I mean, because sometimes I get a little cocky and a little confident in my head, like, this is nothing. This weight is fucking absolutely nothing to you right now. And what it happened on 500 pounds, I was still warming up. My working sets were supposed to be, like, anywhere between, like, six, 620 to 650 for sets of three on squats. And uh, 500 pounds, I mean, I don't want to sound, like, cocky, but it just it just not that much weight for me. Um, I've taken that weight for, you know, 15 to 20 reps for one set. Um, so when I walk into that set, I'm taking it serious but I know that it's just not my max, so I'm not scared. I'm not scared to fail the weight. I'm not having a spot or nothing like that. So I was doing a warm-up set. I do my normal warm-up set, 315 for a few sets, 405, and then I jumped to, to four, uh, 495, which is five plates, and then I just did a set of two just to, um, just to get more acclimated to the weight, and I was gonna make that jump next to uh, six plates, and then I'll do my working sets after that. But I, I did two reps, boom, came up, easy. First rep was super easy. Second rep coming down, I just hear a complete crunching, like tear, like like that 
like you're just like crushing cereal in a bag, you know? And then I'm, I'm feeling it on the way down. I'm so stubborn and I, I, I have this like ego that I don't want people to see me fail no matter what. That's just like how, how I've been my whole life. And it's, it could be a detriment sometimes, but I didn't, I didn't drop the weight. I just shifted to my right leg and I basically just did a single leg squat with 500 pounds. Um, so I don't, I don't, you know, suggest that or recommend that if you feel something, man, drop it, tell someone to grab it, whatever. Um, I'm stubborn and I just don't like to see people see me fail. So I just, uh, toughed it out, uh, racked it after that, took the weights off, immediately got home. So the one thing that when you experience an injury, you have to assess, you know, like, don't, don't think that you want to tough it out and like go the rest of the workout and just push through it man, it's not worth it in that sense. Like, yeah, there's a, there's a, a point where you have to understand there's a difference between injured and hurt. Uh, hurt is just like, I got a boo-boo, I can push through it. Uh, it's not gonna be something that's detrimental to my health, whatever, or it's not gonna take me out of the long goal of what I'm trying to do. So just I mean, a couple of days recovery, whatever. Uh, we've all had those little boo-boos. The, the problem is that when we have the people that have boo-boos and they act like they're injured, and vice versa, there's the people that are injured and they act like it's just boo-boos. Uh, you don't wanna be that person either. It's, it had been dumb for me to hurt myself and then be like, I'm gonna tough this out and I'm gonna fucking, you know, um, push out some more sets or I'm gonna do some more accessories or whatever. No, I dropped everything. I got home right away. And the acronym that I want you guys to remember, write down, it's RICE, R-I-C-E, RICE, just like grain of rice, it's, that's the acronym. So what it stands for is rest, ice compression elevation so it's pretty pretty obvious um you want to rest whatever injury or muscle group that you have you want to ice it now this is the important part once you ice it's going to take down the inflammation compression will help uh make sure that there's not too much blood buildup in that area and then the elevation will make sure that it's it's actually draining back to the heart so I, I, when I tore my IT band or partially tore my IT band, I wanted to make sure that that specific injury is above my heart. So I'm laying down. I want to make sure that my leg or that part that I injured is elevated to a point that the blood is able to rush down. Because as a, as a safety precaution as your body, we have this built-in program that whenever something hurts, we flush blood to it immediately. Just because we need red blood cells, we need oxygen to try and like, uh, you know, make sure that that. The recovery process is going precise or it's, it's just trying to protect itself and, and what else happens when you injure yourself is that the, all the muscles around it will seize up so that's why i thought i at first i thought i had injured my quad i thought i turned i, I thought i tore my quad but it's only because my quad hurt because it it seized up on me because it felt that my it band had tar, uh, partially torn so that's one thing you also have to assess and understand is that not necessarily the things that are tight and that are hurting are necessarily the problem. See, I didn't feel any pain in my IT band, not until a few days after when it started really bruising. My, 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 most of my pain was in my quad because my quad decided to seize up to protect my IT band because it felt like something was wrong. So, so the one other thing that you want to do, and this is more of like when I was working with Pete in a physical therapy school and, and I was working with a lot of clients uh, that were going through a lot of injuries. And when I, worked with a lot of NF, high level NFL guys that had full reconstructive surgery on their knees and, and backs and all this crazy stuff that these high level athletes go through. MMA, I had trained a few MMA uh, fighters. One was a champion, had a lot of injuries there too. Obviously he's a fighter. Um, so you just really want to assess the situation and then you want to actually around whatever muscle group that was hurt, you want to start adding pressure to those things. So like, so my, since my quad seized up, I started adding pressure to my quad, my different parts of my quad, my hamstring, those, those muscles that are surrounding that uh, specific muscle group that causes in or aids in stability and uh, power or strength, whatever. Because once they start seizing up, it's gonna really hinder the process of recovering for whatever muscle group that is. And you don't wanna create imbalances. So now I'm gonna be walking with a limp. So this, this is what actually happens. So down the road, I'll be walking with a limp and then I'm gonna start putting more stress on my right leg. So I hurt my left leg. I'm gonna start putting more stress on my right leg because of that. So now I'm putting way more weight on my right leg. That's how you cause stress fractures. That's how you cause more problems with your right leg. So you wanna really massage out the areas around it. You don't, maybe not necessarily want to massage that specific area because it is super tender. 
but the areas around it for sure. And that's gonna help in aiding more uh, fresh blood, more red blood cells, more oxygen around the area to the area. And then it's gonna help in more aiding and recovering that specific injury. Um, it's a tough process. And if you, if you don't be careful, it can really hurt you. Not only just physically, it will hurt you mentally. That's the one thing I wanted to make about the video uh, today was talk about uh, the mental aspect of injuries. Because if, if you don't look at it and take the right perspective, it's gonna hinder your whole process. And I've seen it happen to a lot of athletes and I've always had to be in people's corners to, to give them perspective as a good coach. And even in my own corner, being a good athlete and a good coach to myself, giving myself the perspective of this isn't the end of the world. This isn't the end of your career. This isn't the end of your journey. It's just a hiccup. You have to, so the saying I, I like to say is you have to regrip and then go again. I mean, that's not necessarily saying that you wanna do the same exact thing that hurts you. I'm not gonna go do some back squats now after that happened, but I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna reassess my situation. And then now I'm gonna, I'm gonna add focus into the areas that I know that I need to focus on in order to get better, right? So I'm gonna rehab certain muscle groups around my leg. I'm gonna reassess why it happened. Okay, so was I, was I jumping in way too fast? I didn't warm up properly. Had I been doing something in my training regimen that caused this imbalance in my leg for my IT band to feel like it had to overpower? So then now I'm assessing all situations and that's what a good athlete does, that's what a good coach does, that's what a great mentor does. All right, so then now I've assessed it. One, one really cool saying that uh, my coach taught me back in college when I was playing running back is, and this is kind of a thing I've always gone by my whole life was, when you get hit, so we call this yak yards, so it's yards after contact. So when you get hit, the one thing that we in the, in the running backs room swore by is when you get hit, you never fall back, right? So if you get hit and you have to go down and someone's tackling you, you never fall back. You never lose yardage after contact. Yak yards is, we used to count the yards that we would get after contact. So after somebody hit us, we're counting the yards now. It really didn't matter how many yards we're running, you know, with no contact, that's cool and that's, that's a statistic. But in our specific running back group, it meant a lot to us to get hit and keep running. Get hit and keep falling forward. That was a big thing for us is that when you get hit, you fall forward. And that's a, that's a huge lesson in life and, and when you get injuries, don't let that shit hinder you. Don't let the injury that you just experienced make you fall backwards or stop completely. If you're gonna fall, fall forward. Fall with progress. Fall with something that's that's gonna keep making you go forward. At least roll forward. And, it, and it's a figure of speech, but it's, it's if, if I were to compare that with what I'm going through right now, it's I'm not gonna stop training. That, that would be dumb. That would be like, if you're willing to just stop training off a small injury, then your goal wasn't that important to you anyways. And that's just the reality of it. So what I'm gonna do is that now I'm gonna try and rehab this, but I'm gonna still train the shit out of my upper body. I'm gonna still train the, all the aspects that I was training before. I'm just gonna be a little more cautious in terms of anything that's full body and that is uh, activating my IT band in a way that it could hinder me, right? Or, or further injure me. And also another thing too is I, I, I think I might have passed over it, but at the point I wanna make also when rehabbing mostly leg muscles, so your quad and your hamstring and like your, your groin specifically, so the smaller muscle groups and the tendons and whatever, you never wanna stretch it. <laughs> Don't stretch it out. That's like the huge, I used to work with a track coach back when I was in, in high school and he was a fucking high level track coach and he said the biggest problem that people have in terms of trying to rehab their hamstrings, their groins, their IT bands or quads is they think that stretching does good things in terms of recovery or, you know, rehabilitation. If the fiber is already torn, walking and average daily living for the first couple of weeks is enough rehabilitation for that muscle group. So for me right now, I'm not gonna really touch it for the next couple of weeks because I need to rest it, but walking like average daily walking to the car, walking, trying to walk upstairs, walking downstairs, that's enough uh, activities for that, that specific muscle group to get enough blood flow and to let the muscles come back and then repair that tear. If I stretch it, I'm actually gonna keep tearing it. So this is specifically for like groins too. If you have a groin injury, you're never supposed to stretch it. 
because there's such a small tendon that if you start stretching it, it's probably gonna tear more and then now you're just hindering the, the recovery process. So don't stretch those muscle groups whenever you injure them. But I will also say too that if, if it's serious, I'm not a physician, I'm not a doctor, go to the doctor, let the doctor assess you. I just wanna give you guys a little bit of, a few tips that if you don't think it's super serious, that you can do by yourself without having to contact, you know, a physician or ever or to try and help you get back to where you need to be and also the mental aspect behind it so if, if I if I had anybody take anything from this video it's the rice so what you do immediately after you hurt and then for the duration after until you start your rehabilitation process so rice rest ice compression elevation kind of speaks for itself make sure you do those simple four things because that's gonna expedite your process but <sighs> I can't even explain how long. I've seen people not do that, and it takes six to eight months to come back from an injury that should have took them three to four weeks to come back from. So really hone in and, and make that a priority. And as much as it sucks, because I know ice hurts, and I know that it's time consuming, but it's worth it. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. And then the mental aspect, like don't let that hinder your process. Regrip the bar, pull again. Just keep going, keep falling forward. Don't let that make you fall backwards and stop everything that you're doing. I mean, like I said, if it's important for you enough to make it a goal, then it should be important enough for you to reassess your situation and then reassess your plan, make a new plan, or at least make changes to your plan so that now you're taking the attributes that kind of like were hindering you and then go again, like keep going. Don't stop. Like that's, that's the one thing I've seen between average people to above average people to great it's it's the ability to adapt to adversity opposed to letting it hinder you or letting it like destroy you i mean everybody goes through something everybody has something that's fucked them up or whatever mental physically but the people at the end of their lives that have done something that's worthwhile they learned how to readjust they knew how to regrip they knew that it, it's their life and then they are not a product of what happens to them, but they are a product of what they do when it does. Well, how do I respond to that adversity? How do I, you know, how do I show others that, you know, don't let that be the end of your story? So I hope this helps. I, for me, I, I'm trying to take the positive lessons out of it. I know it's a negative situation, but I watched this video a couple of days ago, right after it happened, and it was a perfect time, and, and this guy was asking a billionaire, you know, what do you do when you lose five million dollars in one night how do you sleep and he, he basically said the nights i make five million and the nights that i lose five million i smoke my best cigar um because when you win five million yeah fuck or when you earn five million that's a great thing like let's celebrate but you also have to celebrate your losses because there's an important lesson to be learned there and my important lesson was my process i, I got too cocky um I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I overstepped a little bit and then it had to humble me. My process humbled me. So I hope that you guys learned something from this. I hope my words are affirmation for you to, you know, never stop going and to always fall forward. And if you're going to fail, fail forward. Don't ever be the person that fails in the same spot or fails backwards.